Welcome to Tessel Bytes, where we serve you GIS in small bytes. Today we'll be covering ArcGIS Pro, creating layer files. Let's get started. I have a new map here where I've loaded in some layers, the United States boundaries, as well as some counties. I'd like to leverage the labeling as well as the symbology I already have, but I'll be working a project in Texas, so I really only need that information source from Texas. Since I won't be the only one using this symbology, I'd like to save a layer file that I can share. And I don't want to create additional data, since we'll all have access to the same feature classes. So let's start by making a definition query. We can double click or right click properties to get there. Scroll down and simply click plus. Now, if you click this button here, you can use SQL, which you may be familiar with from ArcMap 10. I'll just be doing a simple query on the state FIPS number. Click Apply and click OK. Notice now that I only see the state of Texas, and I've done the same for counties. You'll notice when I zoom in, my counties appear. I'd like to keep that scaling as well as the labeling. Since this layer file will be utilized by others, we should also edit the metadata. So rather than sourcing the original, we're going to give this layer its own metadata. We'll give it a title, some tags, as well as a description so that others using it will know why this is different than the others. We can even generate a thumbnail for this layer. Click OK. Our next step is here in the attribute tables. I selected the layer and then selected the data ribbon. From there, we'll be going to fields. Field aliasing is very important as well as the order as these will display not only our pop-ups, but also our attribute tables. Since we want many people to be using this quickly and easily, we'll just stick to the fields we plan on using. You can simply uncheck the fields you don't wish to see, as well as reorder them. Let's say my county FIPS code should be below my state, and I want to make sure it's visible. And then be sure to click Save. Be sure to verify that the attribute tables and the pop-ups appear as you'd like. Taking one last pass at the layer's properties, I'd like to bring your attention to cache in the properties. In some cases, it may be important to change the cache settings in case you're using data that's refreshed frequently. Take a look at these options closely before you save your layer file. Now that I've reviewed the layer cache and changed the names, Let's go ahead and save our layer file. Saving a layer file is easy as right clicking, selecting sharing, and save as layer file. Once you've given it a location and a name, go ahead and click save. I'll be clicking cancel, because I've got a trick up my sleeves. I'll be making a group layer. Now you can easily make a group layer by holding down shift or control and selecting the layers you'd like to include. You then go to Sharing, Save as a Layer File. However, when you bring that data back in as a group layer, the group bounding folder will be missing some metadata. So first we want to group these layers before we share them as a group layer. To group these, we right click and group. We then provide a group layer name and then some metadata. To add metadata to the new group, you simply right-click, select Properties, and go to Metadata. I can also change the name of the group layer here by simply copying from the metadata and pasting. Using your current extent, you can even create a thumbnail. When you're done, click OK. Now we will share, save as a layer file, and give it a name. Click Save, and you're done. Now let's remove our group layer and bring in the one we've just created. We can zoom in, make sure our scaling and labels appear, as well as view the metadata. Notice that we can see our thumbnail as well as the metadata inside. Going back to the map, I can see that my pop-ups are also working correctly, as well as my field aliasing. So as a recap, you can see that this is a great method for sharing and standardization. You can keep your symbology and your scaling, as well as your labels and your pop-ups. I think this is a great stopping point.
This has been Tessel Bites, where we serve you GIS in small bites. Thank you for watching, and please be sure to visit us at www.tessellations.us. Also, subscribe and ring that bell.